Good evening and welcome into the sanctuary of the Springfield Baptist Church on this terrific Tuesday as we come together to share in a time of God's Word. We are excited uh, and grateful for each and every one of you, thankful for all of those of you who are with us in the virtual space. We give God thanks and praise for you, but not only that, for all of those of you who are sharing with us in person, we're grateful to God for our in-person worshipers tonight. And we give God praise for you. Thank you all for being with us. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you are virtual, uh, don't forget uh, to subscribe, comment, like, and share. Subscribe, comment, like, and share. Subscribe, comment, like, and share. Uh, sow this, the seed of this word into somebody's life. Amen. On your timeline. Somebody needs to hear this word. And so please sow the seed of this word into somebody's life on your timeline if you can. Amen and amen. Let's pause and ask God's blessings over our time together. Let's pray. Father, it's in Jesus' name that we come to you asking God for your grace, your mercy, your peace, and your love as we come to open your word. I pray that he, the Holy Spirit, would teach us and that, God, in all of our getting, we would get an understanding. We thank you for the power of your spirit, and we thank you for the blood of your son. And now, God, we ask that you would get all of the glory, the honor, and the praise from all that is said and done. Be with us tonight. Uh, send the anointing that makes teaching easy, and send the anointing that makes understanding easy as well. We give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. By way of announcements, there are a few things that we need to make you aware of. By way of announcements, we are counting down for uh, our annual Young Adult Day, uh, Young Adult Weekend, which is about to take place uh, on Friday. There's going to be a game night. Amen. Friday, July the 1st, there's going to be a game night. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me slow walk it. Let me slow walk it. Friday, July the 1st is going to be a game night for ages 18 to 35. One more time. For ages 18 to 35. I'll say it again. For ages 18 to 35. And the people of God say it. Amen. Amen. This is Young Adult Weekend. I can't hear too good. Young Adult Weekend. Amen. And so we're going to have some young adult activities happening. It begins, kicks off on Friday at 7 o'clock in the Multipurpose Center. And then on Sunday, on Sunday, amen, on Sunday, uh, you want to be here to hear the Reverend Dr. James Wilkes. He's the pastor uh, of the Elon First Baptist Church. And he is God's preacher and is anointed for such a time as this. And I'm so grateful to be his friend and grateful for what the Lord is going to do through him. He's excited about coming. We were talking yesterday, and he's excited about coming. And so we're certainly excited about hosting him. We give God praise for that and look very much forward to all that will take place uh, related to this weekend. There's some choir rehearsals that are scheduled for our young adult choir. Amen. There's some choir rehearsals scheduled. I think the next one is scheduled for Thursday. Am I right? The next one is scheduled for Thursday. Am I right? Amen. The next one is, there we go. Uh, yes, indeed. All right. The 27th, the 30th at 7 p.m. and July the 2nd 
uh, at 1 p.m., all right? So ages 18 to 35, if you can sing, if you can't sing, amen. If you can lip sync, amen. We want to see your face in the place, amen, and we're looking very much forward to what the Lord is going to do, amen. And so we're excited about this weekend and excited about... Um, how God is going to show himself mighty and strong. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, prepare for this wonderful weekend. Prepare for this wonderful weekend. In addition to that, we have some wonderful things planned for our graduates. We have some wonderful things planned for our graduates. We have some wonderful things planned for our graduates. Amen. Uh, that graduation recognition is going to be July the 10th. Amen. We have some wonderful uh, class of 2022 graduates. Amen. Who are uh, just achieving some wonderful things. And we're very proud of all of our high school graduates, all of our college graduates. And we plan on recognizing them on July the 10th, on July the 10th at our morning worship at 10 a.m. Uh, we plan on recognizing them. Uh, all of our graduates, I know you haven't gotten rid of your graduation regalia. Amen. And so we're expecting you to wear all your graduation robes. Yeah, I know it's hot, but we still want to see you. Amen. And so we're expecting you to wear all your graduation robes and all that regalia. And we'll look forward to uh, celebrating all of our graduates uh, in, in, uh, on that date. We give God praise for our scholarship ministry that's doing a wonderful job in helping us to recognize our graduates. Amen? Amen, amen and amen. All right. Uh, we are going to get to lesson number two of God's gift through you. God's gift through you. Lesson number two of God's gift through you. Those sheets are already on the website. Uh, for those of you in, in virtual space, in the virtual space, those sheets are already on the website. And so I want to thank and praise God for that. Uh, please go there and get the sheets if you need one. Uh, God's gift through you. Lesson number two. And this is a, uh, a lesson that I am uh, excited to teach uh, because this lesson is uh, in, in many ways a piggyback on what we have been talking about uh, for uh, the six months prior to our time in the Word uh, and our series um, for the leadership revival. Amen. Growing pains. All right. And so this lesson very much uh, piggybacks off of Juicy Fruit. Uh, please tell me that you have not forgotten Juicy Fruit. Amen. Wow. Okay. Tell me more enthusiastically that you have not forgotten Juicy Fruit. <laughs> So, for those of you who are uninitiated, Juicy Fruit was our six-month-long lesson on the fruit of the Spirit, where we literally walked through Galatians chapter number five, uh, beginning around verse number six, like we literally walked through all of those verses uh, to help us to have a better understanding of what the fruit of the Spirit is. Uh, and it's very important uh, that we understand that. And so... Um, this lesson in God's gift through you is uh, in many ways a companion lesson to Juicy Fruit, all right? It's a companion lesson to Juicy Fruit. So we spent six months walking through Juicy Fruit in Galatians chapter number five, uh, and we examined each portion of the fruit of the Spirit. We examined each portion of the fruit of the Spirit so that we could better understand uh, how God expects us to live uh, and how we are supposed to display the life of Christ, all right? And the whole idea behind Juicy Fruit uh, started with, if you remember, we started with a very simple analogy. How many of you would go to the grocery store and buy fruit that looks rotten? And nobody in their right mind does that. Nobody in their right mind goes to the grocery store to buy the rotten fruit. 
Amen. And uh, the reason for that is because the, the grocers have come to the understanding that if they want to sell the fruit, they got to put the juicy fruit on display. Amen. And so when we represent Christ, our juicy fruit ought to be on display. And perhaps the reason why people aren't buying Jesus, I can't hear too good, is because they see the rotten spots in your life. Amen. Amen. And so we talked about juicy fruit, uh, and that was our, our sort of impetus into that series uh, that we spent six months in. But this is God's gift through you, uh, and this is connected. This is connected. This is connected. So in lesson number one, we spent a lot of time trying to, to define what the spiritual gifts are or, or what a spiritual gift is and what, uh, what spiritual gifts are for. We tried to lay a foundation to give you an understanding of the nature of these gifts because you need to understand the nature of what a spiritual gift is so that you can understand how it functions. All right? And so we, we're going to spend some time tonight walking through um, the differences between, or comparison is a better way to say it, um, juicy fruit and the gifts of the Spirit. So we want to talk tonight about, or compare, if you will, the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. We want to compare the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. We want to compare the fruit of the Spirit, which is what I've been calling juicy fruit, to the gifts of the Spirit. All right? And as we discovered in our time in Galatians chapter 5, that Paul there lists uh, the gifts, or he lists the fruit of the Spirit uh, as he is giving the church at Galatia an attitude adjustment. If I can just be honest, uh, Galatia, as, as you know, was a very carnal, uh, lascivious society. And so he literally spends time uh, talking about the, the sarks, the works of the flesh. Uh, and then he talks about the, the fruit of the spirit. And so we're going to do some comparison tonight uh, between juicy fruit and the gifts of the spirit. All right. Okay. Let's get to work. Uh, number one, on your sheet, number one. The fruit of the Spirit is singular. The gifts of the Spirit are plural. All right? The fruit of the Spirit is singular. The gifts of the Spirit are plural. Write this down. The fruit of the Spirit is singular. The gifts of the Spirit are plural. The fruit of the Spirit is a complete work within itself. The fruit of the Spirit is a complete work within itself. Are we together? All right, so let's look really quickly at Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. If your Bible is like mine, you, you can almost just plop it open to it. We spent that much time in Galatians 5. All right, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. There the Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit comes to you as a complete work. The fruit of the Spirit comes to you as a complete work. So when you have the fruit of the Spirit, you get them all. You don't get love without joy. 
You don't get patience without self-control. <laughs> you get them all. Now, we're going to talk about this as we continue in this series. If you're honest with yourself, you know you need to develop in areas. But the fruit of the Spirit, when you get it, it's a complete work. All right? And Paul is intentional about that because Paul is wise enough to know that there would be some Christians who walk around and say, well, I got joy, but I ain't got love. I got peace, but I don't have no self-control. So, so, so you have no defense. <laughs> because he says against us things, there is no law. So that means if you don't operate in self-control, then you need to continue to develop in that area. Because you can't say you don't have it. Y'all going to make me work so hard. I already see it. Okay. All right. So you can't say you have peace but not goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is a complete work. When, the fruit, when it's the fruit of the Spirit, you get the fruit of the Spirit. All right? But the gifts of the Spirit are singular. Because you may not get several gifts. You may only have one gift. All right? You do not receive all the gifts of the Spirit in the same way that you receive all of the fruit of the Spirit. And thank God for that. Can you imagine how confusing church work would be if everybody had all the same gifts? All right. So the fruit of the Spirit is singular. The gifts of the Spirit are plural. All right. That's number one. Let's move to number two. Number two. There is no carnality with the fruit of the Spirit. Why is there no carnality with the fruit of the Spirit? Because if there is carnality in the fruit of the Spirit, it is no longer the fruit of the Spirit. It is the works of the flesh. Remember, we spent a whole long time talking about the works of the flesh. We, we talked about well, what I called it was rotten seeds. Juicy fruit versus rotten seeds. Y'all remember that? All right, and, we, and Paul lists the works of the flesh, all right? He lists them in Galatians chapter number five, all right? So there is no carnality with the fruit of the Spirit. Write this down. Number two, but there could be carnality with the gifts of the Spirit. What do you mean, Pastor? If someone is immature, they most certainly could use their gift the wrong way or use their gift for the wrong purpose. You have seen this. Remember I told y'all a couple of weeks ago, I might have ruffled some feathers, but I told y'all a couple of weeks ago that a real prophet doesn't tell you Send me $20 and I'll prophesy to you. All right? Uh, if someone is immature, they may use their gift the wrong way. Okay? Now, let's, let's examine that. And, and we've, we, we sort of talked a little bit about this when, when I was trying to introduce this series. So, remember, in Corinthians, Paul spends a whole lot of time trying to get them together, all right? And I gave you all an overview of this stuff a couple of weeks ago, that, that in chapter 12, he starts talking about the gifts. 
In chapter 13, he talks about love. In chapter 14, he tries to put things in order because they are very gifted, but they're immature in their gifts. How do I know that they're immature in their gifts? They're immature in their gifts because Paul takes them behind the woodshed in chapter 13. And I've said this before, and I know it's, you know, it is what it is. I, I can prove what I say. <laughs> we read 1 Corinthians 13 at weddings, and 1 Corinthians 13, y'all, is a rebuke. Like, it's, a, it's really nice language. It's really pretty and very flowery language. But he is, Paul is taking them to task and telling them none of this stuff works without love. And that's the reason why y'all having so many problems in your church. Because none of this stuff works without love. That's what Paul is saying in chapter 13. And then in chapter 14, he puts things in order. But we get a view of where Paul is going in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 really quickly. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 really quickly. And I'm reading to you from the New Revised Standard Version. The New Revised Standard Version. There the Bible says, And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you're still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there's jealousy and quarreling among you, you are not, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? Brothers and sisters, Paul is telling them, y'all have all these gifts, but you still can't get along. There's immaturity there. And because you're immature, you're prone to, to use the gifts the wrong way. This is the reason why, and, and the more I study this, I was telling Deacon Smith this earlier today. The more I study this, the more I see what God intended for the church to be. These spiritual gifts, I'm getting ahead of myself. These spiritual gifts are intended to be groomed and grown in a loving church environment. Y'all gonna make me do it. I'm trying not to. The, these gifts are supposed to be groomed and grown in a, in a loving church environment environment a loving church environment where people can help you to grow but also hold you accountable and that's what the environment should be as we as we develop these gifts and I, I, I'll talk about that later all right number three let's go to number three Number three, write this down. The purpose of the fruit of the Spirit is to control your flesh. Galatians 5 and 16, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Is that what it says? So if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Write this down. The purpose of the fruit of the Spirit is to control the flesh. The purpose of the gifts of the Spirit is to edify the body. Is to edify the body. Capital T, capital B. Not your body. The body. The body of Christ. So the purpose of the fruit of the Spirit 
is so that you don't walk in those rotten seeds, so that you don't do the sarks, right? The, 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 the works of the flesh, all right? And we thank God for that. And we thank God for that. Amen. We thank God for the fruit of the Spirit. Because it's that fruit of the Spirit that will grab you when you want to act out of character. Amen. Right? And, and, and the proof of your maturing is that you can walk in the fruit of the Spirit. All right? But these gifts of the Spirit are to edify the body of Christ. The gifts of the Spirit are to help to build up the church. The gifts of the Spirit are to help to point people to God through the work of the church. If the world ever needed the church. The world needs the church right now. And not for us to sit in here and, and smile at each other and high five each other, but, but the world needs us to be a beacon light to hurting and hopeless people so that we can tell people in the words of that old song, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Lord have mercy. It don't take much for me, Brother Tyrone. It don't take much for me. All right. So, so the fruit of the Spirit helps us to control the flesh. The gifts of the Spirit are to edify the body. All right. And we, we're going to continually go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, you might as well just put your finger there because we're going we, to, during this series, we're going to be in Ephesians 4 a lot. All right. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 12 gives us a quick purpose for these gifts of the Spirit. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 12, here's why you need these gifts. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. All right? Okay. Number four. Number four. We speed walking. Number four, believe it or not, I'm almost done. Number four, <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is developed during your walk with Christ. The gifts of the Spirit, write this down, are given at your spiritual rebirth and developed during your walk with Christ. One more time. Church is a place that is designed to help you hone your spiritual gifts. Which means the more that you let the spirit control you, the more you will be able to demonstrate this juicy fruit. One more time. The more that you allow the spirit to control you, the more you are able to demonstrate this juicy fruit. The more you allow the spirit to control you, the more you are able to demonstrate this juicy fruit. Which means it's real easy to know who is not allowing the spirit to control them. <laughs> Y'all caught it. It's real easy. All right? The more you allow the spirit to control you, the more God through you will demonstrate this juicy fruit. And the more you allow God to demonstrate this juicy fruit, the more you will be in tune with the gifts of the Spirit that the Lord has given you. Um, how can I say it? Yeah, let me say it this way. So, if you have, it's easier for water. I'm about to get up, I'm about to run right after you. <laughs> it's easier for water to flow 
through a clean pipe than it is for water to flow through a dirty one. It's, it's, it's easier for water to flow through a clean pipe than it is for water to flow through one that's clogged up and messed up. When we walk in the fruit of the Spirit, when we allow the Spirit to control us, it helps to keep our pipe clean so that these gifts can flow through us so that we might be able to edify the body of Christ. So these gifts are developed during your walk with Christ. And the more that you walk in the Spirit, the more fruit you can demonstrate and write this down, it makes you more prone to have more gifts. Why? Because God can trust you. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. Number five. How am I doing? Okay. Doing good on time? Wonderful. All right. <laughs> Tonight was a test pilot. Y'all don't even know it. Y'all my guinea pigs and y'all don't even know it. All right. Number, <laughs> number five. The fruit of the Spirit, write this down. The fruit of the Spirit is designed for you to use everywhere you go. It's designed to make Christ more attractive. The gifts of the Spirit are to be developed and deployed in church. Why? Because of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 12. <laughs> for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. All right? So you need, well, you need the fruit everywhere. Okay? You need the fruit everywhere. You need the fruit out, outside of here. You need the fruit inside of here. Amen. You need the fruit outside of here. You need the fruit inside of here. Amen. You need the fruit outside of here. You need the fruit inside of here. Amen. All right? But inside of here is where you develop and deploy the gifts of the Spirit. Because it takes the spirit to understand the spirit. You can't explain faith things to carnal people. Amen. So they're not going to understand your gift. Number six. I told you I was almost done. Write this down. Number six. The fruit of the Spirit affects you. The gifts of the Spirit affects, affect others. You have the fruit because you need it. Can't say amen. amen. Say ouch because the truth does hurt sometimes. You have the fruit because you need it. But you have the gifts because other people need them. You got the fruit because you need that. You need patience with June, but you need long suffering with June, but. Come on. Yes, you do. You need love. 
You need joy. You need peace. You need this self-control. You need this goodness and this kindness. You, you need it. But you get these gifts because other people need them. You need these gifts because, Lord have mercy, you need these gifts because other people need them. And whereas somebody outside of the body may not understand the level of faith you walk in, when you walk in that level of faith inside the body, it encourages somebody else because they get to see an ocular example of somebody walking in the gift of faith. And it helps to build their faith. That's how this is supposed to work. That's why we need to do this stuff in here. <laughs> Number seven, and I'm done. Mm-hmm. I know y'all can't believe it. I can't believe it either. <laughs> Number seven. The fruit of the Spirit is about the attitude that we should have. The gifts of the Spirit are about the action we should do in the Spirit. They work together. The fruit of the Spirit is about getting your attitude right. The gifts of the Spirit are about the work that you do for the kingdom. And here's, here's, here, here has been the problem. The challenge has been for some that we have tried to have the fruit without the gifts or we've tried to have the gifts without the fruit. <laughs> and if you have the fruit without the gifts... You are ineffective because you got the right attitude, but you're not serving anybody. And if you have the gifts, but not the fruit, it means you're extremely gifted. But the challenge is people don't like you because your attitude is jacked up. So you're serving people, but you mean and hateful while you do it. So we got to have both the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Because if you just got the fruit, oh, you nice as you can be. But you ain't helping nobody. And if you just have the gifts, man, you are as gifted as they come and mean as a rattlesnake. Now, can I just be honest? Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. We have in church seen examples of both. We've seen people who are extremely nice, but do not serve. And we've seen people who are extremely gifted and are as mean as they come. And God is saying, in order to do the things he prescribes in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12, we got to have them both. We have to have this juicy fruit and we got to operate in these gifts because that's how this is supposed to work. It goes hand in hand. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. 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 So let's give God praise for tonight's lesson. I'm done. <laughs> oh. Y'all don't know when to shout. I just gave y'all 20 minutes back. Y'all don't know when to shout. <laughs> Miss Betty, I'm going to feel some kind of way now. Um, so what I decided to do tonight, and, and y'all probably figured it out. This is half the lesson that I was going to teach. All right? 
So we'll get the other half next week. All right. I decided to to break this lesson into into a little bit more digestible chunks because uh, this was just a warm up. This was just an introduction. All right. <laughs> um, but next week when we come together, we're going to talk about some of the characteristics of the gifts of the Spirit. Um, and as we talk about the characteristics of the gifts of the Spirit, it's going to bless you because it has, it has even stretched me. And so I know it's going to stretch you. Um, and as we talk through these things, uh, we need to remember the importance of our maturity level. All right? We need to remember the importance of our maturity level. Again, uh, when Paul takes them to task, it is because they are immature. All right? And so, few things are worse than gifted folk who are immature. I can't hear too good. I say few things are worse than gifted folk who are immature. So we're going to talk a little bit next time we come together. We're going to talk a little bit about these characteristics. I'm going to share with you some, some very basic information about how to discover what your gift is. And we'll, we'll talk through some of that stuff next week. All right? All right. So um, don't forget about Young Adult uh, uh, Weekend. Uh, this coming Friday uh, with our game night. Our game night is for what ages? 18 to 35. 18 to 35. So the game night is for ages 18 to 35. That's uh, Friday night at 7 p.m. And then uh, uh, also um, we have some choir rehearsals scheduled. Let's see those choir rehearsals real quick. We have some choir rehearsals scheduled. Oh, they got to put me back up so they can get the choir rehearsals up. Amen. All right. Uh, those choir rehearsals are, there we go. Uh, uh, the next one is on the 30th uh, at 7 p.m. And then on the 2nd at 1. All right. And that, those, uh, the choir is for our young adults, ages 18 to 35. And then on Sunday at 10 a.m. again, uh, the Reverend Dr. James Wilkes Jr. is going to be with us, and I promise you he is going to bless you. Uh, he is excited about coming, and I'm grateful that he'll be with us. Amen. And so we look very much forward to that. And then uh, on the second Sunday, uh, July the 10th, on the second Sunday, July the 10th, is our graduation Sunday. Our scholarship ministry is working very hard to make sure that we recognize all of those who have uh, cross the milestone of graduation, both high school and college. And we want to celebrate uh, all of those of you who have graduated, amen, and going on to bigger and better. We give God praise for you. All right. Don't forget about uh, our morning prayer call tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. Uh, don't forget about our prayer call tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. And then tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. We'll be uh, both in person and virtual for our uh, Wednesday night prayer meeting. Amen. Uh, we'll be both in person and virtual for our Wednesday night prayer meeting. And we always look forward to time in prayer. Amen and amen. All right. When you say it, all you know. Do it feel like it's time to go? <laughs> I don't know what to do with y'all sometimes. I'll tell you the truth. Y'all are a lively bunch. Well, since I got a few seconds, let me shout out some people who are online with us. Uh, let me shout out Sister Colleen Holden, Sister Roz Lowe, uh, Sister Iris Smith, Fee Woodard is in the building, Fanny Griffiths, Herman and Denise Dunn, uh, Benita and Thomas Parker, uh, who else? Marion Burnett, God bless you. Amen. Uh, Miss Sylvia Dobbin is in the building. Thank you guys so much for being in the virtual space. We give God praise and thanks for you. Let me do this really quickly, not to embarrass anyone, but just because I need to. If this is your first time 
If this is your first time at Bible study, wave at me. Wave at me if this is your first time. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. We give God praise and glory and honor for you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Amen and amen. All right. When you said all you know, it's time to go. Will you stand with me as we prepare to be dismissed? Let me shout out uh, Wit for doing our slides tonight. Thank you, Wit. I appreciate you. <laughs> Amen. Pastor was on the road today, so Wit pinch hit. Uh, thank you, Wit. I appreciate it. Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Father, we thank you um, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. And now, God, as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence, go with us and stand by us until we all meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. If you're in the sanctuary, please be seated. If you are watching us virtually, uh, as usual, keep the faith, stay safe, wear, wash, and wait. We absolutely love you. We'll see you soon. God bless. <laughs>